Hey everyone, I'm Damian Holbrook from TV Guide Magazine and TV Insider, and I'm talking with Emmy Rossum from Peacock's new Angeline. Uh, but uh, look, I, I have to ask, what are you advertising? Oh, these old ones were for my band. We're currently looking for a new guitarist. It's a long story. The new ones will be just for me. So you're a singer? I'm... whatever you want me to be. There's a lot going on in this show. Um, and I'm of a certain age where I remember Angeline being this like iconic mystery. Nobody knew who she was. Um, and what drew you to this? Because you are literally immersed in this character. So I first saw Angeline's billboards when I was 13, driving around LA and discovered her much like everyone else in LA, but a little bit later. And um, by that point, everybody knew who she was and she was already hugely, wildly famous. And everyone that I would ask, who is this woman on the billboards, Angeline? Everyone would light up with this magical smile and then tell me a completely different story about who she was. And that I found so fascinating. How can you be so famous and yet so unknown. Um, and I think that inherently is what kind of drew me to her, this kind of fantastical kaleidoscopic narrative of stories um, about her that serve to, to kind of fuel the mythology of, of her legend, I think is so interesting. So I definitely don't think of it as a biopic. And I think we're playing with very, very unconventional ways of telling story um, um, that kind of honor that kind of fantastical spirit and way of storytelling that she has herself. I was always fascinated because as a kid, you would see in like Us Magazine and things like a sighting of Angeline on the street and you'd be like, oh, everyone got to see her like driving down. It was like, but what does she do? Who is she? And this show, it almost like, I feel like every episode is a different kind of part of that narrative. That there is like so many versions of, the, of this woman uh, and, and you got to work with her on the show. Yeah, I, I got the chance to meet with her and um, speak with her for many hours. And I was so nervous by that point. I had idealized her for so yeah. many years. And I was an hour early and way over prepared. I mean, I had, I had gone so far down the rabbit hole. I had bought meditation tapes of her on, on eBay and listened to them in so many bubble baths. I had memorized every word of them pretty much. I had seen every interview, read everything she'd ever written, bought her own magazine self-published called mm. Hot Pink. I had seen her art. I, I, was, I was fully in um, and I love her. And um, so I was an hour early. Um, at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, and she arrived on time in the hot pink Corvette, but then ended up to be an hour late because she got swarmed in the parking lot and was selling merch out of the trunk of her car oh my God. to fans. And when she sat down, she said, okay, so why do you have such a hard on to play me? And wow. I thought that's exactly why. She's authentic, she's uncompromising, she's a rebel. Um, she is beautiful and powerful a little bit like a hummingbird. She has very, very quick energy, but there's something very delicate and authentic and tender about her. And I just totally melted. I told her that I, you know, that I, that I'd met Obama and Buzz Aldrin and, and was more honored and nervous to meet her. Um, and I told her that I hoped that what we, you know, would do with the show would honor her spirit and um, maintain the mystery. Uh, and then she met with our director and our writer, um, Lucy Cherniak and Allison Miller. And then she uh, gave us the rights to make the story and uh, recreate her billboard images, her trademarks, her uh, re-record all of her original songs, um, use any of her quotes and anything that she had ever said, and really kind of shape the character through, the, the, her, through her own words and let her words speak for herself. Um, and the one piece of advice that she gave me was, I'm a mirror. I want you to tell the story that you want to tell. I'm an icon and I serve to inspire and I speak to every person differently. So whatever you see, that's the story that you should tell. Obviously, you know, the look is so key. And you spent so many years on Shameless in really comfortable clothing. I did. And so what, what was it like when you were spending hours putting right. on this look? Some days were three hours and some days were seven hours. So before I would even shoot. So 
It was, it was a, it was, but you know, honestly, like these artists are such of a high level that to mm -hmm. be able to have them work on you, and and you know, I had done so much work to create the emotional life of the the character of Angeline and my version of her that to have that elevated and supported by artists of this caliber was a joy and an honor. And I would just try, you know, not to stretch and move and, and you know, yawn at two o'clock in the morning too much to, to kind of ruin it. And we had a magical pink uh, fairy wand that was battery operated and made a lovely noise that we would bless me with every morning as I sat down in the chair. Oh and we had pink kind of streamers everywhere. So we really tried to make the trailer a really happy place that was full of like the whimsy that captures her spirit. And it really, it's crazy. I'm like, I'm watching, I'm like, there's no way that's her in there. Like <laughs> it is just, you're tr so good. So congratulations. And don't forget everyone, Angeline on Peacock, so good. <laughs>